Hello everyone! I'm Red, and this is Firewatch. This is an indie walking sim game. I don't know what else to call it, guys, sorry. That came out a few days ago. I've been pretty preoccupied with a whole lot of shit. Work, school, you know, all that crap. But this game has been on my radar since fucking... Since it was he goddamn teased last year. So, without further ado, let's jump right in, shall we? See how it got the name, Firewatch. Quick load. Campo Santo presents... In cooperation with Panic Inc. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, uh, what's your, you know, major? You slur the word major and it smells like Coors. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours? She asks. She sniffs here. Toxicology? <laughs> Was that a burn? You ask. She says definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. That, uh, escalate quickly. Ah, elevators. I've been playing a lot of horror games lately, and let me tell you, elevators are my fucking kryptonite. Let's grab this backpack. Why was there a backpack in the elevator just hanging out? Guess it was mine, but... walking's out of the question. Let's go for a drive, shall we? Oh yeah. May as well start by dumping my crap in here. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's bad ass. Hmm. I've always had a soft spot for beagles. You pick up the beagle and she names him Buckets. <laughs> Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30 p.m. and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. Hmm. That would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Oh hey, looks like we actually have gameplay now. So, in the true tradition, let's see what's over here, where they clearly don't want us to go. Fire danger. Extreme today. 
Prevent forest fires. Okay, fine, fine. I won't light the forest on fucking fire, dickheads. Hmm? Oh, hey, a hat. Mm. Cody, Wyoming. Eh, sure, what the hell. I'll take this. For thoroughfare Trailhead. Two forks. Hmm. Do not forget to check in. Not recommended for inexperienced hikers. A primitive backcountry trail. Well, I play enough Skyrim. I know how to climb a mountain. Vertically. What the hell was with Bethesda's physics engine? 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the man. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. <sighs> getting mad is kind of my trait, but... Mm. Mad or ignore? I've never been the confrontational sort. You don't touch each other all night. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 19A1. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. <laughs> you pose and flex like he man. You look awesome. Man, Henry here is pretty athletic. Fucking recreational hiking? Good for you, buddy. Good for you. I've, I've actually been meaning to get into hiking out recently. It's just, it's so fucking cold out, guys. Two forks lookout tower. Eight more miles still. Fire lookout. Okay. Spacebar to climb over obstructions? Sure. <laughs> Wow. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. But fuck the dog! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away or you beat his goddamn face in. I scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks you to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. <sighs> you absolutely do not. <sighs> Screw her or fall back on what I want. I'm a doormat. Agree if she commutes back and forth. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember that she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. <sighs> you make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. It works. <sighs> Worked better than most of my attempts. You watch Dallas on TV and sleep together on the couch. Aww. 
These two make a cute couple. Let's have a look at this guy's journal, shall we? It only... Oh. Oh. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Dementia? Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They're crushed and begin to make, tri make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For, for a while, your friends come by with little things to brand the day. She, she gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a uh, home. It sits with you a couple months. <sighs> I've never been one to abandon family. <sighs> the view's fantastic, I have to say. Am, am I hiking to get away from it all? Am, did I run from my past? Run from Julia? Or run from myself? Hey, buddy. Hey, yeah. I'll catch you later, man. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter. Drinking then, too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. Trust that she sleeps like a rock, I guess. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. I know the feeling. Every One night, you're stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point ten and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to leave, live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. to the lookout tower. I've always liked the night air. It's the, it's sharp like a knife, but at the same time it helps you feel alive. Helps you forget who you are. And in a way, in a way, it's the easiest way to 
Just s stay sane. Turn on the power. Okay. I'm game. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Hey. Uh, who are you? Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... sleep? Forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. <laughs> You've killed three ex-husbands, you're rebelling against mom, or nobody back home can stand you. You're rebelling against mom. Okay, um, you're probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids, by the sound of your voice, at least 15 years ago. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? <laughs> well, she also says I fuck immature men, but in my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? Me. I'm going now. <laughs> Just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Well, Welcome I mean... To the job. Welcome to Firewatch. A narrative story about uh, fucking... Well, from the looks of it, two people. Henry and Delilah. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. <sighs> yeah, I guess I'm ready. Hey, 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 sorry. Guess I slept in. Hey, sorry. Guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Whew. Yeah, Jesus. I guess it's, what, 6? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to... Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? West-facing window. Are those fucking fireworks? Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set him straight. I'm on it. Do I write him a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. One, two, three, four, huh? Yeah, I work in... I work in IT. So I understand. Are... Shut up. <laughs> Alright, let's get out of here. <laughs> I like this guy. He just immediately grabs his backpack regardless of what I fucking tell him to do. Like, oh fuck no, buddy. I'm not leaving this with you. Oof. Breathtaking fucking visuals though. Holy shit. <laughs> uh. 
It's one of these games, huh? Where you can just vault over whatever. Point seven miles to the west, Jonesy Lake. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm uh, I'm all out of time for this one, but let me know how you th how you found this. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Please try to stay safe out there. All right. Later, guys.